Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Smart Women Savvy Money 2010 webinar series. 30 minutes on the clock, 20 to teach, and 10 to talk. Today's topic, no bag ladies here, isn't just a buzz phrase, but was specifically chosen because a lot of women fear that they will run out of money and resources as they get into their advanced years. While there are admittedly some challenges we as women face, for example, longer lifespans, shorter working years, limited or non-existent employer-provided pension plans, we can change that story and make sure that the boogie woman <laughs> doesn't appear in our future. I'm sure we've seen some of the bag ladies that I'm talking about, someone walking down the street looking pretty forlorn, pushing a cart, and uh, possibly um, has all of her belongings in that, in that shopping cart. Now, there are some steps and strategies that can be taken to bolster your chances of a comfortable lifestyle later. And we're happy to have a great speaker with us today, Ms. Kristen Berman, who's going to walk us through a few concepts to consider, as well as strategies. Before we get started, though, I'd like to cover some housekeeping with you. Number one, all lines are muted. However, you can use the chat box. Uh, depending on if you're in a tablet or a desktop, it will either be in the middle of the screen, as it would be here. If you are on a tablet, it might be at the top of the screen or at the bottom. And the chat box is a place where you can actually pose a question. Um, and we will either answer your question um, at this, during the, actually at the end of the presentation. Or if you prefer to be heard, you can unmute your line at the end of our presentation and uh, open, we'll, we will open it up for questions. So um, you'll be able to share uh, some of your insights, some of your thoughts, feedback, and questions at that time. But we definitely want to stay on task with that 30-minute time frame. So we will answer any questions that you might have. It's our goal to finish the program in 30 minutes, but for those who have to leave beforehand, the call will be recorded and available for replay. We will send it out to everyone who has registered for today's call. Now, with that, we're going to start out with a short video that we think you're going to find informative and insightful. I want to see if you can recognize this voice. So you're thinking about your retirement, an exciting yet scary proposition. Two crucial questions have probably crossed your mind. How much do we need to save and where do we need to put it? To answer these questions, you must remember why you're saving money long term in the first place. You want to have an income stream in retirement. Think of it like climbing a mountain. What's the objective? Getting to the top? Well, not really. The ultimate objective is really to get to the top and then make it back down safely. In the context of your financial life, getting up the mountain is your pre-retirement accumulation phase. Getting back down is your retirement distribution phase. This is one continuous journey. You can't call in a helicopter at the top of the mountain if you didn't bring sufficient supplies to make it down safely. To figure out where to put your savings in pre-retirement, you must understand how the distribution phase works, how retirement income streams work defines how to pack your bags in pre-retirement. Many people haven't had the opportunity to look at it from this perspective, which can be very costly. Back when pension plans were the norm, retirement planning for individuals used to be more automatic. Pension plans put the responsibility of providing you retirement income in the hands of your employer. Typically, your pension amount was comparable to a good percentage of your salary. Pension plans automatically took into account both the accumulation of money and the distribution of it for retirement income. Around the 1980s, things started to change significantly. As retirement plans like 401ks were introduced, they started to become the norm. These types of plans meant employees became more responsible for providing retirement income for themselves. 401k type plans focus mainly on accumulation of money and not on distribution. When used alone, they can be very inefficient for creating retirement income streams later. 
For example, to avoid potentially running out of money in retirement, financial research recommends withdrawing only 3 to 4% from these types of invested retirement assets every year to live on. These relatively low distribution rates can be problematic. Think about it. You need $1 million at retirement to create just thirty dollars to $40,000 a year of retirement income. What about adding inflation to your current income? $100,000 of income today needs to be $180,000 in 20 years at 3% inflation just to maintain spending power. This would require the accumulation of approximately $5 million by retirement time. How feasible does this path sound running your own numbers? Is this the path you would want to stay on if you had a choice? See, the problem in many cases isn't the accumulation of money in retirement plans but rather the low distribution rate we could be on track for, if that's all we do. What if today you could put yourself on a path that provides higher distribution rates from the retirement assets you're accumulating? Then $1 million could potentially create $70,000 to $130,000 a year of retirement income. How? By knowing how retirement income streams work, so you can take action now in pre-retirement to position your savings accordingly. Get off the default path of low distribution rates and contact us today to learn about saving for your retirement income. You'll be glad you did. Excellent. So I hope that you guys uh, recognize that uh, voice. Um, and so having said that, I'm going to now uh, introduce you to our guest speaker. Um, Ms. Kristen Berman, and Kristen is a part of uh, the Urban Wealth Management Team. She has been an integral part of our process because she does um, focus on some very important elements of our, um, of our retirement planning, longevity planning. So some of you in the audience have probably been to some of our longevity planning forums or have heard about it. Um, and she actually is our specialist for um, income planning and long-term care planning. She has been an advisor with Fraser Financial Group since March of 2009. She's a firm believer in the importance of planning for extended lifespans and is careful to address such cri critical issues as maximizing sources of guaranteed lifetime income, developing tax-saving strategies, and providing long-term care planning. She's currently an affiliate member of the Consumer Attorney Association of Los Angeles and services their membership of 3,500 attorneys. Additionally, she's an active member of Accounting and Financial Women's Alliance and the Divorce Transition Professionals Practice Group. As a single mom raising three children, Kristen has a personal passion for assisting others with creating a bulletproof financial plan. I like that. That secures their needs for lifelong financial security as well as legacy planning. Her transition from physical fitness, her prior career, she was a registered dietitian and health educator. Um, so she's transitioned from being a physical fitness expert to a fiscal fitness expert, and it's been a natural one that has strengthened her resolve to help her clients plan for a long and healthy life. So with that, I'm going to introduce you to Kristen Berman. Kristen, are you there? I am. Thank you so much, Renee. Great. And I also want to thank Morgan Freeman for his uh, nice introduction to our discussion today as we delve into one of the things that I believe is on most people's minds these days, and that is the current retirement crisis. But as we promised you, no bag ladies here. So today we're going to be talking about how to take a proactive approach to build your retirement income strategy like a fortress. And if this will advance. You want to advance that one for me, Renee? Thank you. Well, the numbers continue to show that the majority of Americans have little confidence that either, even after working 40 to 50 years, that they will be able to enjoy the simple wonders in life without worrying about how the bills will be paid. The important point is today, how do you feel about your retirement income plan? 
Have you mapped out a solid plan to ensure your income can last for up to 25 or 30 years and hold up to the biggest risk given the latest longevity projections? If you can advance that again for me. Thank you. So one of the first things that we must face head on are the major risks to your retirement. Now, I know it's really scary to try to think about how you're going to have enough money to comfortably retire. And because of that, probably the natural inclination, I think, is to simply avoid thinking about it and just hope for the best. But in this case especially, knowledge is power. And it's really important for you to understand how retirement assets can work together to shield you from these major risk factors. So let's take a look at what we're up against. And if you can advance that for me. Well, I alluded to it already. Anyone want to guess what the biggest factor is to your successful retirement? Longevity. And why is that? Well, because it really is. It's our grand multiplier. And if you think about it, retirement used to be maybe 10, 15 years. But now we're looking at it easily lasting 20, 25, even 30 years. That changes everything. And people have a real reason to fear that they could run out of money without proper planning. So one of the biggest factors that we're going to discuss today happens to be one of the most important, yet one of the most misunderstood factors, and that is how to determine how much income you can safely withdraw each year to live on and not run out of money, aptly called the withdrawal risk. And again, longevity has changed all the rules on this. We're also going to look at the impact of the order of returns or market risk. Now, average rates of return will step aside for the sequence of returns in importance to a retiree. And this, too, is such an important concept that we're going to be looking at this in depth today as well. Inflation. Anybody think that we could see some inflation over a 30-year period? To give you an idea, if inflation averages only 3% per year over just a 15-year period, you're going to need about $4,700 per month to match the purchasing power of $3,000 in today's dollars. So the bottom line is inflation must be accounted for or it will erode your retirement income plan. What about taxes? Well, our current deficit is over $18 trillion and rising and is projected to be over $20 trillion by this same date in 2019. Now, most people, I find, don't really know what a trillion is. I mean, after all, it rhymes with million and billion. <laughs> Here's a very simple way for you to understand how much a trillion is. If we have $1 and $1 equals one second, and a million dollars would be about 11 and a half days, a billion dollars would be about 32 years, and a trillion dollars would be about... 32,000 years. Isn't that incredible? So do you think taxes are going to be going up, down, or staying about the same? I really think it comes down to one four-letter word, M-A-T-H, math. And Renee and I always try to prioritize tax mitigation in our planning. And this is an area where we can be quite impactful. Health care and long-term care. Health care and long-term care. No retirement plan is complete without a plan for how you're going to pay for health and long-term care expenses. Yet, for many seniors, it's the only thing that they have not planned for that could wipe out their entire life's work and savings. There are so many options and combinations of options, and the market is changing so fast in this area that we focus on a way to help you create a plan to preserve your assets, independence, and dignity in a tax-efficient manner. In fact, we will cover this complex subject more deeply in another session that will be dedicated just specifically for this purpose. And if you can advance that. Thank you. One of the important things you need to understand is there are two very distinct phases to retirement planning. First, you have the years in which you're saving or accumulating your pot of money that's going to be used for your retirement. Often, This is looked at as, we call it, your accumulation years. Now, many of you are probably still in your accumulation years, and this is important because the assets that you choose to fund right now can make a really big difference in the amount of income that you're going to have in retirement. But then the day you retire or start to draw income from your pot of money, you have now entered your distribution years, and all the rules change. 
it is the getting down the mountain successfully that people need the most amount of help with. And now, as Mr. Morgan Freeman addressed, the responsibility is all yours. So how many of you and the people you know would be interested in learning how you can optimize your retirement income using the same amount of money that you're currently allocating to create, a much, more, to create much more retirement income and at lower risk? Sounds great, right? But how are we going to do that? Well, many people don't realize if they plan their assets strategically, which is ideally during their building years, and yet, not surprisingly, the younger you start, the better, but honestly, we're able to make a big difference for people of any age so they can generate more income in an optimal way. So let's start with two of the most important things that you need to understand, and very few people really do, that are critical for a successful retirement income plan. And if you could advance, thank you. Remember, we said there are two very distinct phases to retirement planning. We're starting with the accumulation phase. And as we said, one of the most important factors to understand is what we call the sequence of returns. Well, let's see what we meant by all that. So here we have an example of someone who saved $500,000 and was in their accumulation or savings for retirement mode. So they're not withdrawing any money. So you can see in portfolio number one, the stock market does what it always does. It goes up and it goes down, and this is over a 26-year period, but it averages about 10%. So we see that we have a whopping $6 million plus at the end of the road. Now, what if we theoretically reverse the order of the stock market return, and what do we see at the end of the road? We still have the same exact $6 million plus. So what does that tell you? All that really mattered during this accumulation time was the average rate of return. So that's not so complex. Just keep on saving. But, and, oh, there we go. And now let's see what happens at the sequence of returns and what it does during the distribution phase, which is when money is being removed every year for, to live off of. In this case, we have the same $500,000 to start with, and the stock market is still averaging about 10% returns over those years. We're still feeling pretty safe to take 6% a year. So we're going to account for inflation and increase our withdrawals by 3% annually. That should be okay, right? If we're earning an average of 10, shouldn't we be able to take at least 6% a year? Well, we're talking about that next, but let's see how this all plays out. So portfolio number one, which again represents what the stock market actually did during those 26 years, in year 26, we don't have enough money to live off of, and we're out of money. So how are we going to manufacture more income when we're so well into our retirement years? Pretty scary. So now let's look at the hypothetical example again of portfolio number two, where we reverse the order of the return. How can we have over $2.5 million dollars of money at the end of the road in one example and be running out of money in the other. Well, it's all about the sequence of returns. Well, the sequence of returns was not favorable to the retiree in portfolio number one, and the reason for that is because there were four negative annual returns during the first nine years of withdrawals. The sequence of returns is critical during your distribution years. The only problem is we know the stock market's always going to go up and down, but can any of us control when that happens? So we have to know, using math and science principles, how much we can safely take out during our distribution years and not run out of money. And so one of the important points here is we need to understand when you need to be the most conservative in protecting your retirement nest egg against potential market declines. And as this shows, that critical time is about the five to six years right before you plan to retire and about the five to six years right after you retire. The other critical factor to consider is the safety of our withdrawal rate. The Wall Street Journal had a recent article that explained it pretty well. They called it the bulletproof withdrawal rate for a diversified portfolio. Make a guess. How much can you take out? 5%? Wrong. Too much. Even a 4% withdrawal rate fails 20 to 30% of the time, depending on the investment model and the assumptions that are used. So what is the bulletproof rate? Well, according to them, only 2%, although luckily 3% is considered safe, but 4% is pushing it, and 5% or more, and the person will probably run out of money. So with this model alone, we are typically recommending around a 3.5% withdrawal rate 
which is consistent with what Morgan Freeman shared earlier. But wait a minute. Didn't Morgan Freeman also say that there is a safe way to withdraw more? I mean, otherwise, even if you had a million dollars to start with, at 3.5%, that's only $35,000 a year. There's got to be a better way. However, you do need to be in the market to get your best options for growth and to hedge against inflation. So it's important that you set yourself up to get as much bang for your buck. And if you can advance that. Thank you. How do we do this? Well, it's called a volatility buffer. And we think of this as an important tool that very few people know to take advantage of. A volatility buffer is a separate asset that offers guaranteed growth every year that is not affected by market fluctuations or interest rates. The idea is you should be able to pull the money that's needed to live off of from the separate pool of money when the market is down. So you don't have to pull money out of the market sensitive assets when they're down. So you in fact create your own portfolio number two option. So let's look at how this can play out. In this case, we are viewing a 20-year period where the S&P 500 averaged 12.77%. Now, this person started with $750,000, and they withdrew $75 a year for their retirement income. Again, thinking, you know, with the market performing so well, they should be able to take out, you know, less than that and be safe. We see that the market didn't do so great in the first years four, five, and eight. In fact, we had negative years those years, which is all, you know, pretty early into their retirement. So we found out earlier this is a big problem. Well, look at that. They're out of money in only 14 years into their retirement. Now, again, if, we, uh, if, these, re if these down years are turned, occurred later in their retirement years, such in, as in our hypothetical example number two, we would have been okay. But without the benefits of hindsight, you really have no idea what the years ahead will hold with the stock market. Now, what if we had created a volatility buffer that allowed you to pull from that pot of money every year following a down stock market? Wow, what a difference that makes. Now, instead of running out of money in year 14, you have almost $1 million left at the end of 20 years. And in our second portfolio, it gives them about $700,000 more money than they had in the previous example as well, all thanks to three years' worth of a volatility buffer. So how much difference does having a volatility buffer make? Well, let's review the standard guideline again. With no volatility buffer, you see a 3% withdrawal rate offers about 90% chance of not running out of money even after 35 years. So that's that's quite safe. So we use about 3.5% again, which generally correlates to about a 90% chance your money is going to last at least 30 years. But again, who can live off the 3.5%? And if you can advance that, thank you. Now, if we have built ourselves a volatility buffer that would cover up to three years of income, now we have a better safety net to increase our withdrawal rate to between 5 and 6% and still have a very, very solid um, chance to last an entire uh, retirement span. So do you think that that could make a really big difference in, in your income and your peace of mind? Next, we'll look at what if we built four years. If we had the four years of volatility buffer, now we're looking at being able to take six to even up to 8%. And especially if you get through your first few years without a lot of down years, you can be a little bit more flexible with that number. So again, when we're doing our planning, we typically strive to help our clients to create three to four years of a volatility buffer as a goal. Okay, now earlier I mentioned the impact of taxes, especially in the future, as it is almost certain that rates have to go up. So I like to think about it this way. Let's just say that you needed to borrow money and I'm sitting on a good pile of money, and you come to me and you say, can I borrow $100,000? And I say to you, yeah, sure, I've got the money, no problem. And then you ask about the conditions, like how much am I going to charge you in interest to pay it back? So I tell you, oh, I don't know, we'll just figure that out down the road. How would you feel about taking my loan? 
Well, that's kind of what we're dealing with, especially when you have most of all your assets that you have not yet paid taxes on, such as 401ks and traditional IRAs. So that's another aspect that we like to address, the importance of tax diversification. You will have much more retirement income at less risk when you have protected a good portion from future taxation. Now, I wanted to end by showing you a very typical example of how we work with our clients to help them secure more income for retirement. This is an example of a report we did for a couple who wanted to evaluate their retirement income strategy. You'll look to see, now the gray bar, that just shows like what if they did nothing, like they, they just stopped where they were at that point in time and didn't contribute anymore, and that would have given them just $51,000 a year with none of it guaranteed. Now the pink bar shows what if they contribute, continued to contribute just to their current retirement assets, which I believe in this case was um, their 401k plans. That would have generated 90000 well, almost $91,000 a year, but again, none of it guaranteed. Now, the blue and the green bar was where some of our recommendations came into play. The next two blue and green bars represent two different strategies that we often employ that incorporate some additional tools that help you to maximize income, using the same money again at less risk. The blue is what we call our covered assets approach, and the green incorporates the use of a volatility buffer. And very oftentimes what we do is we use a combination of both these tools, but either approach, you see, generates almost $150,000 of income. And in one of them, $123,000 of it is guaranteed, again, using the same amount of money. This is where the individual consultation is so critical because it's really important that we can best understand your needs, but I can tell you we always find a way to help our clients get more income. So to sum it up, these are some of the factors that we address when helping our clients to op optimize their retirement income. Of course, there are so many moving parts to the puzzle, and today we really were only able to focus on a couple of the biggies, but in future sessions, we'll be covering a couple more pieces to the retirement puzzle in depth, including optimization of your Social Security benefits and how to protect it all with a long-term care plan. So we really want to encourage all of you to take the next step by committing to create your own retirement income plan, no matter what stage of the game you are at. And also, be sure to take advantage of our complimentary consultation, because as Morgan Freeman said at our beginning, you'll be glad you did. Of course, minus his deep voice. <laughs> great. That's great. Thanks. So um, you covered a lot there, so I really appreciate that, Kristen. Yet um, we are right at the top of our hour, and so I want to make sure that we do complete um, our session. If anybody has any questions, uh, this would be the time to put those in the chat box, um, or you can hit star six to unmute your line and answer any questions before we close out. Are there any questions? I cannot see the chat box, so if there's anything in there, you'll have to let me know. Okay. I do not see any questions. I think you might have covered everything that needed to be, but you have a chat box, or if you have a question, you can unmute your line by pressing star six. So I think what we want to do now, if um, – uh, our contact information, of course, is available, um, and we do want to be respectful from everyone's time. A couple of things that I might add is that um, we have, as a follow-up to today's uh, presentation, a quick little questionnaire here called Test Your Knowledge, which is available to you, and as I said, we will be sending out a replay link, and it will actually have this wall available for you to take this test. It's a very short quiz, nine questions to test how financially uh, adept you are. Um, not anything heavy duty, but we think that you're going to find it very, very useful. Here's an example of it. As an example, what's a qualified annuity? Nine questions, it'll take you to the end and we'll give you your answer if you are a novice or you're an expert or any place else in between.
I also want to add that our Urban Wealth Management blog is chock full of great articles um, on essentially everything that you can think of, including our lifestyle series, which covers style, um, yoga, health, nutrition, um, as well as a lot of the financial topics that we like to pride ourselves on here. Finally, I do want to also bring to your attention that we have a number of uh, webinars that are scheduled through the balance of the year and into the first part of the year. Next month, we'll start the uh, first of our lifestyle series. We will have the tech diva on, and uh, her topic is meet your phone. For those people who want to do something other than make phone calls and send and receive text messages, she's going to introduce you to your phone. In September, we are going to be hosting a session entitled Putting Your Money Where Your Heart Is. And that's going to be a discussion of evolution of socially responsible investing to the stewardship and impact investing and beyond, and how you can actually make a difference with your dollars, not only in terms of personal um, investments and contributions um, to local uh, and national organizations, but how to actually look at uh, the um, opportunity to invest and there are there's a whole world or universe of investing in socially responsible impact and sustainable investing so we're really looking forward to that so with that said we're running a few minutes over if anybody has any questions please post it but we are available to discuss and talk with you at any time with that said we'll end today's session and thank you all for taking the 30 minutes on the clock 20 minutes to teach and 10 minutes to talk. Have a great day and a great Thanks, summer. Thanks, Renee. Thank you, Kristen.